Medical professionals of Reddit, when did you have to tell a patient I've seen it all before to comfort them, but really you had never seen something so bad, or of that nature? I used to do psychiatric evaluations in an emergency room setting. One time, I'm evaluating this 60 year old woman who is lying in the hospital bed. I'm asking her questions, and she stops me and says, excuse me, but I need to pass some gas, I let her know that this is a medical setting and that is a completely normal body function and not to be embarrassed. People pass gas all the time, I was not prepared for what came next, she let it rip, and out came the loudest, wettest, and longest sounding fart I have ever heard. It was bubbly and juicy, hitting all the deep notes while ending on a squeaker. I don't think Satan could have made a noise like that with his anus. It sounded so relieving, but then the smell hit me. It was bad enough that I started to gag and had to excuse myself from the room. When I came back I politely asked if she needed a nurse for anything in case she needed to be cleaned up after that, but she declined. Obviously I've witnessed people farting before, but I've never heard or smelled anything like that before. That was something else. Fourth year med student here. On my rotation a couple months back, I walked into the ED and was immediately asked to help a nurse and resident put a catheter in a patient. Now a catheter placement is usually a one person job so I was pretty confused as to why they needed my help. I walk into the patient room, and I'm immediately greeted by a disgusting rotting flesh smell. Worst thing I've smelled in my life. The patient has to be pushing 400 pounds and has the worst edema, soft tissue swelling from congestive heart failure I've ever seen. His scrotum and penis foreskin are about the size of a small watermelon, and the foreskin had swollen completely over the tip of his penis. The nurse had a speculum, tool OBGYNs used to look inside vaginas, inserted into the man's foreskin while the resident took the catheter in a hemostat, pliers type thing, and jammed it into the man's pee hole for 20 minutes. They finally got the catheter in and took the speculum out. It was covered in a thick brown discharge that looked like fermented pea crap. I still don't know how he let his scrotum and penis swell that much. Welp, that's enough Reddit for today. Not a doctor, but had one that defiantly lied to me. So I have an extreme reaction to poison oak. After a day my skin literally starts slugging off exposing the fatty tissue. It then starts growing away from the contact point doubling in size every day until I get treatment or die of infection. Day 1. Man this poison oak is itchy. Attempt not to scratch. But you do. Day 2. This is bad. I must have an infection. But I did everything I could to keep it clean. Call the doctor. Make appointment for Monday. Day 3. Wake up Saturday stuck to my sheets because the gauze is too saturated to contain my body fluids. Make an urgent care appointment, but make it for the afternoon cause I got to see the kids soccer game. Upside. It doesn't itch today. No pain at all. Doctor sees me, makes a phone call tells me to sit there and don't move. An hour later, another doctor comes in wearing some kind of hazard suit. I start freaking out. He tells me he is a specialist dermatologist and has seen it all. Also comforts me by saying, worst case scenario it's flesh eating bacteria, the fact that you're not dead by now might mean you have superpowers. He starts to remove the gauze the previous doctor wrapped me in, and as soon as the affected area was revealed he threw up his hands and jumped back, then says, he's not seen this before and wants me to describe everything in detail. He takes swabs, sends to lab prescribes me steroids and antibiotics, brings me the prescriptions and after sitting in the little room for a total of 8 hours lets me go because I've stopped leaking. I saw him again on Monday and the labs had nothing terrible and I was completely scabbed over. He had me finish all the pills, saw me two more times, and I didn't even get any scarring. Just my body getting rid of the poison oak by getting rid of all the skin. Sounds like Stevens Johnson syndrome. For God's sake be careful, other plants and drugs can do that to not only your skin but also your eyes and certain internal organs. Obligatory not a medical professional, but a first aider, I was doing a duty at the finish line of the London Marathon as I have done for many years. I've seen enough chafing, dehydration and blisters galore. Someone always has the worst of the day but it happens so fast that you can hardly mentally tally whose nipples were the most raw. Until I had a runner come in covered in blood complaining that her nipples had completely gone. 
She had chafe so bad that her nipples and areolas were rubbed to nothing. And the worst part was that she had her nipples pierced and the piercings had embedded themselves in her exposed breast tissue. I had to talk her through sterilizing the wounds while trying to assure her that it happens to everyone. The image of a nipple bar peeking out of red, raw breast tissue will haunt me. I was a fat little 10 year old with a slide on a float in the middle of the lake. We had a bucket on a rope to pour water on the slide before you went down. I missed a spot. My right nipple very literally was burned off by the hot plastic. It took years before became somewhat normal again. Doc here. Currently working with accident victims. I had a patient once hobble in, walking in his key later, a week after being hit by a car. He'd been to the air. They discharged him and said just the usual bumps and bruises. I did my round of x-rays, and his femoral heads were broken on both sides. Think of the leg bone as a capital L, with the bottom of the L hooking into the hip his were cleanly broken through the bottom sections on both sides. Turns out he'd had occult fractures on both sides the x-rays didn't initially see, and walking on them collapsed them. Never seen that before. Another was a patient with shoulder injury, both sides, got an MRI, and both shoulders were basically destroyed. Complete failure of the rotator cuff on both sides, with the humerus being drawn up and back on each side. Instant surgery. I'm a medical secretary for a podiatrist. I obviously didn't treat the patient myself, but I discussed his case with his doctor. The patient had severe anxiety and therefore hadn't been to a doctor of any kind in approximately 20 years. He ended up in our office because his wife had called the day before and expressed that he needed to be seen due to a foot infection. When he arrived, he approached the window and told the receptionist that he was sorry because his socks were dirty as he hadn't made it to the laundromat recently, which was a bit weird in and of itself, but we work for a podiatrist. We've seen it all before, as it were. He then sat in the waiting room, and it was mere moments before the smell seeped into the administration office. The receptionist put him in an exam room as quickly as possible, and upon her return, she informed me that the infection was literally oozing out of his sneaker. All we could do was open the widows and apologize to other patients as they arrived. It was foul, and when I entered the room after his appointment to clean it, the medical assistant was out that day. I immediately began gagging and had to forcefully push my manager out of the way as to avoid vomiting on her on my way to the restroom. As it turned out, the dude had had the infection for approximately 3 months, and had been showering with his sock on since he'd discovered it. He literally hadn't removed his sock from his infected foot in 3 months, and his wife had somehow been living with the overwhelming smell. The doctor said it was the worst infection he'd ever seen, but the patient was so incredibly anxious that he got the standard. I've seen it all before, throughout his appointment. I was working as a CNA in a nursing home. There was a lady who had been neglected before she came in so she had stage 4 bed sores, all the way to the bone, and the treatment nurse wanted me because I am calming and really good with the residents that needed a little support. She has me roll her on her side and then carefully peels back the bandage. I'm staring down in half horror half fascination as I can clearly see the bone, ligaments, muscle, layers of skin. I'm gawking hard and the nurse is showing me some neat procedure when I hear a small, frail voice. Is it getting better I turn on my biggest, friendliest smile and reply. It does. It looks so much better. Does it feel better she smiles and nods. I change the subject to grandkids. She had a picture of them. I haven't seen anything like it before or since. But she was such a lovely lady and I started looking forward to helping because she was such a nice lady to talk to. Thank frick there's nurses like you. Not the doctor, but the patient. In 6th grade, I contracted so many different forms of dysentery that I was placed into CDC quarantine while they tried to figure out where I got it. I was barely conscious throughout the whole time but all I remember is my doctor in my room with me, having hooked up my Wii and playing brawl as I recovered. I had no clue that my parents were being investigated for child abuse or that I was in quarantine until a few months later, or that I had passed out and had been covered in vomit and crap for hours before my mom found me and took me to the hospital. I ended up getting it from someone not washing their hands after handling a snake and then cooking dinner at my science camp. Wash your dang hands people. The dang Oregon trail over here. I'm an RN who specializes in wound care. We see a lot of crazy things in my clinic. 
A common occurrence is a pilonidal cyst, which is an abnormal growth in new gluteal cleft aka butt crack, that contains hair. It usually happens with younger PPL, say 1320s, and is obviously very embarrassing to the patient. When we get them, they've already had the surgery to open and extract the cyst, so there's a few holes left that we have to heal. One poor soul that came in had the worst post-surgical hole I've ever seen. It was so big, it extended from the top of her crack to the top of her anus. Then are on either side about 12 centimeters. It was like the surgeon carved out most of her butt. The patient was devastated, and I tried to comfort her by telling her she's not the worst I've ever seen. Poor girl. Not a medical professional and the dentist didn't even try to play it off as if he'd seen it before. But my sister had bad problems with her teeth. So many of her teeth were pulled. And one was sawed in half while it was still in her mouth so that they could pull half of it. As our dentist held the saw, he said, I've been telling all my dentist friends about you. I've never done this before. That was probably the wrong thing to say before you saw someone's tooth in half. Years ago my then 11 year old shattered both femurs and her hip. At the time, her orthopedic specialist was so reassuring and confident that we had no doubt about her recovery. A year later, we went back for a review and he asked me if I'd like to see her trauma x-rays. Not having any idea of the reality I said yes. What I saw looked like her leg bones had exploded. After my freaked out reaction I commented on how cool and calm he was, and how certain that she'd be fine. He said he'd actually had to go for a short walk around the hospital to collect his thoughts since he had no idea how he would put this child back together. He also told me had used the films as a teaching aid. He's one of my heroes. You're going to have to explain how one shatters both femurs and a hip, and if she's walking now. Yep. Had a patient who was 62 and he had never seen a dentist before. I am a dentist. Had literally everything going on orally, especially the smell omg. The smell. Me and the assistant were like, don't worry we see this kind of stuff all the time. Not a lie, just never all at once. ORN here. So, so many. 1. Vaginal discharge the color and consistency of guacamole stuck on a speculum post pelvic exam. The patient's husband had recently been released from a period of federal incarceration. 2. The first time you smell a really funky, long-term GI bleed, bleeding into the intestines, usually the colon, who and blood equals murder most foul, and the patient is sometimes a sweet, incredibly sick little granny watching us gag as we clean her up, apologizing for the smell, and we have to just say, from behind the peppermint oil soaked mask, oh sweetie, it's okay, we do this all the time. 3. Dead, sloughed intestinal lining. Another smell that will haunt your damas. But the winner winner chicken dinner and the no. Number. It's not that bad. I've seen worse. Category was the homeless dude who came in complaining of blood in his urine. He wasn't able to pee more than a few drops at a time. So we used a little ultrasound machine to see how much urine was in his bladder. More than 1000 milliliters. You just bought a catheter sir. I tasked one of our male patient care techs with the job and had barely gotten back to the desk when he came running out yelling. I need some help. Grab gloves. I lifted the gown covering this guy's junk and grabbed the penis to help. Maggots. In. The urethra. And he was pee off that we removed them because. In the core and numb. They teach you to eat yeah maggots. That's free protein. Damn it. Just eating some coleslaw and chicken while reading this no big deal. Not a medical professional, but I have impressed a couple. It's not super weird but just uncommon I guess. I was overweight but active when I was younger and broke my lowest rib while snowboarding. Long story short, I did not know it was broken, honestly, so I never got it checked by a doctor. The rib traveled up over the next two ribs and has since fused to them. I now have a permanent tilt on my spine where this rib attaches to it and now that I have lost some weight a bump you can see feel on my chest. It is kinda weird when you tell a doctor about something on your body and their face lights up like a kid on Christmas and they ask for permission to feel it. Some people really do love their jobs. <laughs> Nursing corrections here. Had an inmate patient come in with complaints about severe lower abdominal pain. He told me that he had something stuck in his prison pocket, before I could ask him what he stuck up his anus. He bends over and shows me a cord sticking out. I told him, 
don't trip, I'm sure the doctor can help you out with that, you'll be alright, come to find out. The prong of the phone charger got caught up into something and it was stuck. As I was trying to comfort him, I started to hear this vibrating sound. So I asked him if he heard it do. He said, it's the phone inside me that stuck with the charger. It wasn't just a regular flip phone, it was one of those Samsung smartphones. I sure hope it wasn't a recalled Note 7. Had a patient who had a melanoma the size of a cauliflower head on the back of her ankle. Melanoma doesn't generally grow like that. Maybe it was the ozone injection she'd gone to another country for. Had a guy that shot himself under the chin with a shotgun. He had actually done it like 16 hours prior to family finding him. He was still alive, conscious and alert to what was going on. His jaw looked like predator. I had family freaking out of course. Had to tell them we see worse off him. Which may be true, but they are usually dead. He lived for almost a day after shooting himself, then died in the back of my ambulance. I had to drop my first nasogastric tube on a rather hysterical older teen. I was actually a very experienced nurse, but just had never had the opportunity to insert one. I check the procedure manual, watch a YouTube video, and walk in the room. I'm not worried. This usually isn't that difficult and I'm in general a skilled nurse. Girl is sobbing. Mom has to leave the room she's so upset. And angry dad tells me he's a paramedic and that I better know my crap. Dad says aggressively have you done this before I say I can't even count the number of times I've done this. Girl says will this damage my vocal cords curious question. But I'll laugh a little and say with a smile not if you stay calm and follow my instructions dad says because she has studied under. Name I didn't recognize. For years and has a full ride to fancy art school that I did recognize. That ng tube slid in like butter. No problem. Girl did just fine. I'm not going to lie. I was sweating just a bit. Also one time some young 30 something crap out the most blood I've ever seen someone crap out and live. He was lying passed out on the floor of the bathroom while our rapid response team assembled. Trying to figure out how to get this massive young man out of a rather small space. He came to, saw all the blood, and just calmly looked at me and said that's a lot of blood. Am I dying I said nah. I used to work labor and delivery. I know it looks like a lot of blood, but I've seen way worse. You're going to be just fine. That was a lie. I had never seen so much freaking blood, even an L and and I wasn't sure he was going to make it. He lived. I'm a surgeon. A couple of years ago they send us this guy. 52 years old, that had shown up in the year because he allegedly hadn't pooped in a week or so. To make a long story short x-ray showed he had something lodged in his rectum, and sigma, and descending colon, so way up there, that was a little over a foot long. He denied having put anything up there, yet, yeah, right. We try to go from the bottom up and nothing, we see something but we can't clamp onto it, so, what now? Operating room, ended up opening him up. And inside the colon we see a hand. I just about crap myself. Ended up being a mannequin's arm. Like store mannequin. It was stuck up there up to the elbow. That was an odd one. I'm a pediatric nurse. And tridged a young girl with a rash. Mom had been to several doctors and they didn't know what it was. I recognized it right away called Stevens Johnson syndrome. I remained calm. Patient was flown to a burn center. But died. I had only seen it once before and it was fatal for that patient too. We had a patient in the air who was sick of her visual hallucinations so she scooped her eyeballs out. She looked like something out of Hellraiser and unfortunately did not fix her hallucinations. Another patient came in with a colostomy and ran out of his equipment so he duct taped a trash bag to it. It had several pounds of fesses in it. Holy frick. That poor woman. I am so sorry you had to see that. Not even close to a medical professional but my aunt is a nurse and told me about a guy who came in coughing up blood and maggots and it turned out to be some worms he got from eating something that ate through his stomach lining into his esophagus and were in his throat. Paramedic here. Had a homeless guy call saying he stepped on a nail about a year ago. I could smell it from the door so I expected it to be bad. But when I went to pick up the leg by his heel there was just nothing there. His foot just evaporated into pus and maggots and his metatarsals clinked through my fingers. While I'm standing there trying to comprehend what happened he just sighed and asked me to pick up his foot. What foot buddy? Put it back on. He said it falls off a lot these days. 
but it still hurts so that's good right I had no clue what to tell him. The nurses thought it was hilarious that the baby medic, that's me BTW, got grossed out. Not a medical professional. My husband was born with a pretty insane heart defect that all the doctors were in agreement shouldn't have worked and he certainly shouldn't have lived as long as he did. One called it a ticking time bomb. His heart had two chambers instead of the normal four. He didn't have the big arteries that led from the heart to the lungs but a series of smaller ones. I will never forget the first time I saw him take his shirt off and you could literally see his heart beating in his skinny chest. Literally. Every beat. At the age of 25. Three years after we were married, the time bomb blew. Seven years later I very vividly remember his chest moving as his freaked up heart beat. I am so terribly sorry for your loss, and hope your time together was precious sex. A dog bit my little sister in the face, ripping through her mouth and cheek. It was at a soccer game. She crawled on top of a big dog called a borzoi, which startled it. It rolled over and bit her in the face. This was the late 80s, smaller town. There were no pediatric surgeons available, no plastic surgeons. She was in the air with her face ripped open. Anyways, our general pediatrician, who is now my kid's pediatrician, 30 years later, who had only graduated maybe 10 years prior, sewed her face back together. It was 30 stitches on the inside of her mouth, and 30 or so on the outside. She had a massive scar down the whole side of her face. Anyway, fast forward 15 years. She grew normally, her face is fine, her smile is fine, no long term damage, apparently, a face is full of nerves and muscles, and that's why only plastic surgeons work on faces, particularly with children, having nerve and muscle damage can make their face grow crooked as they age, it is a highly specialized field, but in this case, there was nobody else, just a general pediatrician, and he managed to save her face, with no long term nerve or muscle damage or even scarring now that she's an adult. We found out 25 years later from our pediatrician's wife, that he spent an hour or so crunching his old med school books in the seat of his Plymouth Reliant in the hospital parking lot, studying facial anatomy, nerves and cheek structure, etc. He walked into the hospital and performed a multiple hour surgery, on her face, sewed it back together, perfectly. You would think a plastic surgeon did it. His wife told us he came home that night, just flopped down on the couch, and sat that there, amazed that he'd done it, proud, but cautious, a new general pediatrician, sews a toddler's face back together, and it worked, now, you would never know it happened, and he has never, ever, done another surgery like that again lol. Saw a surgeon one time seriously screw up what I can only assume was intended to be a hernia surgery using abdominal mesh. By the time the guy came to clinic his stomach looked like a shuttlecock, not on the inside. He was just walking around like that. Freaking hernia mesh. Years later it feels like a spork is stabbing me in the groin. I saw a patient with a history of crippling depression who attempted suicide by firing a bullet through his chin and out the top of his head. With surgery he survived. I followed his psychiatric neuro care over the next month and the dude was cured of his depression. His subsequent mood was like a chill hippie with an endless supply of weed and no negative effects. Whatever the bullet did on its way through his brain cured his depression and left everything else intact. I'm the patient here and the nurses didn't even try to say they had seen it before but it still fits. When I was getting treated for cancer I got a really bad case of pneumonia and had to be intubated and put into like a semi coma type deal. I don't remember anything that happened in those 6 days but I was apparently made sober enough to open my eyes for visitors every day so I don't know if that counts as a coma. It was some pretty serious pneumonia because it was like less than 2 days between my first cough and them making the call that I would need to be intubated to stop me from drowning in my own fluids. So they didn't mess around and gave me a ton of antibiotics. You know how some hospital beds have a track along the ceiling that they can hang IV bags from? I had enough antibiotics hanging from mine that it broke and fell to the floor again. No memory of this. But the thing that was truly unprecedented occurred when they were changing out my butt bag. I don't fully understand what it was but they had something on or under my butt that collected all my bowel movements. 
They put it on after I was heavily sedated, and removed it before I was totally awake so I don't really remember it. For anyone who doesn't know, antibiotics can cause a lot of diarrhea. Apparently when they rolled me on my side that day I let loose a fire hose of liquid crap that arched through the air across the room and splattered all over the door and window which were about 12 feet away from my bed. I think it's super cool and funny so they didn't have to pretend like it was normal to comfort me. There are two options here, a bum bag, which is a bag that is attached to your bottom via a very sticky, waterproof seal that collects all your feces, or a flexi seal, which is essential a tube that goes into your anus and allows liquid feces to drain down a tube, into a bag, so you either had a tape stuck to your bum, or a butt plug poop tube, both are fantastic devices. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.